Good day, monkeys. I'm Eddie Braverman. That's my co-host, Midas Mulligan Magoo. And you're watching Episode 6 of Not Safe for Work on WallStreetOasis.com. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, and I hope you're all ready for the holiday season. Uh, today we're going to cover a topic that's near and dear to all of our hearts, namely work-life balance. It's too broad a subject to cover in one episode, so today we're just going to touch on the phenomenon of burnout and how to avoid it. Uh, in future episodes, we'll cover things like relationships and family and what have you. Also today, we'll be going. To, we're going to discuss the Fed bailouts of the foreign banks and the American taxpayers bailing out Europe. And we're also going to cover the potential damage WikiLeaks might do to the banking industry. So let's get to it. Um, it's not easy for me to talk about work-life balance without sounding like a complete hypocrite because I had none when I was trading. My work-life balance consisted of two activities working and drinking. I would work and then I would drink. Sometimes I would work while I drank. Other times I would drink while I worked. But that's what my work-life balance consisted of back then. Most of what I learned about balance I learned at the expense of the things that were truly important to me in life. Burnout is one of those is one of the first signs that your life is out of balance. When you just can't seem to bring yourself to get up in the morning. That's that's when things are out of whack. And this business breeds burnout like no other business I've ever seen. I mean, let's face it, you're doing glorified clerical work for 80 to 100 hours a week with no end in sight. Burning out under those conditions is only natural. And when you reach burnout, you're nowhere near as effective as you need to be. And that's why substance abuse is common in this line of work, though thankfully I don't think it's as common today as it used to be. Uh, the key to coping with burnout is to have something that you're passionate about outside the street. Uh, it might be a hobby, it might be a sport, it might be something as simple as working out. I mean, hell, it might even be substance abuse. Who, who, who the hell am I to judge? But you need something to take your mind off your work. And I think it also helps to have a countdown if, if you're particularly burnt out. I'm talking about a countdown to some time off, like a vacation, or a countdown to when your analyst stint is over. Just something that you have to look forward to to remind yourself that this stage of your career isn't going to last forever. What do you think, Midas? Think you can lead a monkey to bananas, but you can't teach him to peel, Eddie. You can't tell these kids a damn thing, man. They're all chasing the pot of gold just like me and you were at their age. The problem is true. by the time this generation of monkeys gets to the end of the rainbow, there ain't going to be nothing but some chocolate coins wrapped in that uh, glassy yellow foil you see at the supermarket, you know? Here's the deal, guys. This topic is very important. Obviously, as Eddie said, we're not going to be able to cover everything in one show. So I'm not going to get into too much detail today. I'm just going to warn you in advance to shut your mouths and open your minds a little bit. You guys have some structured ideas about life, and it never works out the way you really plan. So we're going to give you some suggestions. Think about them. Try them out. They might help your daily situation. So I'm going to give you your first homework assignment. You let me know if you like it. Let me know how you did with it. When the show's over, I want you to get on Craigslist. I want you to buy a cheap leather chair. I want you to bring it home. I want you to put it in the middle of your living room. I want you to get online. Print out a pic of your most hated MD, associate, professor, ex-girl, whoever. Tape that thing to the chair, bust out a nine iron or a chef knife, and go to town. I'm not condoning <laughs> violence against others or felonious activity of any sort, but destroying something with physical force is great therapy. Highly rejuvenating and prevents burnouts of all sorts, especially if you're dealing with Europeans. Which brings us to our next subject, Eddie. <laughs> well, yeah, the Fed was uh, this week was forced to release information about who got what during the height of the crisis. Uh, and in their typical spirit of transparency and cooperation, they fought the disclosure to the nail in the courts. And when they were finally brought to heel, they still left out details of almost a trillion dollars in lending. But I, I guess that's the best taxpayers can hope for. Uh, anyway, two important bits of information came out of the disclosures. First, the boys over at Goldman can never again make the ridiculous claim that they didn't need to be saved. That bucket shop was hanging by a thread just as thin as cities or B of A's. In addition to the $10 billion in TARP money they got, they got another $14 billion from uh, the AIG bailout. And then they got another $24 billion the Fed didn't want anyone to know about. So you can go suck it, Lloyd. The second and more important revelation was just how much American money was sent overseas to foreign banks. Hundreds of billions of dollars were shipped to foreign banks that saved them from going under. Uh, 
Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders even came out and asked, has the Federal Reserve of the United States become the central bank of the world? At one point, Barclays was into the Fed for $232 billion. Uh, now, I understand counterparty risk, and I can even accept that these lending facilities were made available to avoid a crisis at American banks. I mean, I get that. What I can't abide is the lack of disclosure and the active campaign to cover this shit up. If you're going to use taxpayer dollars for this stuff, you can't treat the taxpayer like a mushroom by keeping him in the dark and feeding him bullshit. This kind of shit makes my blood boil, and it lends credence to all the various Fed conspiracy theories that have been floating around for the past century. Midas? Conspiracy theories? <laughs> there are none when it comes to the Fed, man. They're all true. The Federal Reserve is essentially a hedge fund for big banks worldwide, except instead of providing returns like the average Amen. hedge fund would to investors, they provide favors. Yeah, they're a high-class shy luck. Fed functions outside of the scope of any governing body, and this past week was just a monkey and doggy puppet show just to bring them out in front of the fans and wave to the people and pretend like they're actually doing something. They didn't divulge anything, nothing that actually matters and that you couldn't have found out yourself. I mean, imagine if a, if an organized crime figure could enter a courtroom and just answer every single district attorney query with none of your business, kappa. That's essentially what the Fed does. As far as Goldman, yeah. fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Next to Warren Buffett, they're the biggest tarp receiving welfare, whining, diaper-loading babies on the block, man. And yes, I know that a lot of you guys watching this would castrate yourselves in order to hit TMT next year. But everything has its price, and trust me, your soul is worth a few pips above 200k a year. Now, just so my capitalist cronies don't feel slighted or think I'm going soft, fuck Bernie Sanders. And Eddie, don't you ever quote no goddamn socialist from Vermont around me again. Hey, you, you gotta give it up to Bernie, man. You might disagree with him, but the guy, I mean, he's a man of principle. He, he might be ass backwards, but he, he, he doesn't pull any punch. Listen, man, Bernie, let me tell you something. The Fed is the central bank to the world. As I've been writing ad nauseum lately, you know, the Fed's the financial arm of the global military machine. They are, you know, they're the ones that fund everything that we do. Uh, who do you think the uh, USS George Washington is uh, charging their gas bills to when they go uh, perusing through the Yellow Sea? I mean, you know, the Fed is here to fuel the banking system. They have nothing to do with the economy, and that's just, again, a story to, for the fans. Um... Yeah, Bernie, I gotta tell you, it's one uh, pretty big circle jerk, and uh, you're one of the nuts busting to keep the engine moving smoothly. Uh, the Fed isn't bailing out Europe, it's bailing out European bankers. Hmm, do we see a pattern kind of developing here? So it's not until Washington shows some balls and steps on the Feds that there's going to be any improvements, which we know is not going to happen. So, yeah, Bernie, you're preaching to the choir, but you're just as much a part of the problem as the solution. Well, while we're on the subject of Europe, uh, Europe, I thought I'd bring up the whole WikiLeaks thing because uh, amidst all the State Department crap that got dumped by WikiLeaks in the past week, WikiLeaker Julian Assange claimed that his next target was a major American bank. Uh, people, people quickly put two and two together, and now the conventional wisdom is that he's talking about Bank of America. Uh, this is because he claimed in an earlier interview, uh, like a month before this, that uh, he had five gigs of data on B of A. And Barry Ritholtz had one of the best one-liners about this whole deal when he said, unless they have five gigabytes of video showing their CEOs engaging in bestiality, it's hard to imagine WikiLeaks embarrassing the big banks. Uh, now, right off the bat, how proud are you to be a member of an industry whose upper management has so utterly destroyed the industry's reputation that it now requires videotaped instances of criminal bestiality to even raise an eyebrow anymore? <laughs> But I have to agree with Barry. What, you know, what could they possibly have that could do any damage? Assange himself said that it didn't approach illegality. It's just extremely unethical behavior. You know what we call that on Wall Street, Julian? <laughs> Tuesday. In other words, you know, if he had Vic Pandit in bed with a dead girl or a live boy, we'd have heard about it by now. Uh, there's nothing in that data that's, you know, that's going to do anything. It's nothing, nothing that's even going to make the evening news. You can't possibly do more damage to banking than banking does to damage itself. What do you think? 
Uh, I just got to throw my two cents real quick on WikiLeaks. I mean, the whole thing's overblown. Most of this stuff is available to, through the uh, Freedom of Information Act. So it's just another example of how lazy we are and somebody regurgitating public information back to us. Uh, that having been said, we are at war with a great many things uh, amongst ourselves as well. But uh, many college kiddies and lifelong lefties don't accept that fact. But Julian is not doing anybody any favors uh, bringing up a lot of this information. Uh, unless he's planning a reality show, in which case, uh, you know, props to him and he's going to do great. Uh, it's lonely at the top. Americans got to realize that wholesaling state secrets is not uh, patriotic or promoting freedom of speech. It just gives certain people out there more reasons and opportunities to chop your head off, slice it, dice it, and throw it in their next shawarma. But uh, as far as the banking industry goes, i got to disagree with you. Uh, it's just because things happen slowly and incrementally over time, um, much like your precious euro will eventually fail. Uh, Vic and Jamie and Lloyd are going to get their comeuppance, even if it is after they're dead and they're just remembered as the scumbags that they are. Um, remember, uh, World War II gave uh, the financial industry the opportunity to be forgotten as the fat cats who caused the Depression. There's not going to be any such luck for Wall Streeters this time around with uh, the instant media coverage and the politicians needs to grandstand all the time. Uh, this is not going to go down. People are not going to forget this. And unfortunately, it's going to be the young guys coming up today who are left to take the fall for it. So yeah, absolutely. This is this is the reason why uh, you know we uh, we enjoy shitting on the bulge bracket so much, fellas, because. They're probably not going to be around. Definitely not in uh, in these sorts of parameters uh, once you guys reach the senior levels. And again, it's not going to affect the crooks that did it. It's going to affect you guys. This is why my personal message to you is boutique, 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 where the industry is headed anyway. Uh, you might make a little less dough. You're definitely going to have a much better quality of life. And most importantly, you will not have Elliot Ness up your ass because, as I will repeat every single week, Next generation's BSDs are going to be coming from the SEC and the CFTC. Mark my words. Uh, ah, moving on. So, this week, continuing my mission to prove to you that we have really seen it all before. Walter Badgett's, but you are allowed to pronounce it bag of hose if you like. Lombard Street, a description of the money market. Story of a little town called London 100, 120, 30 years ago. Proof that history really doesn't at all, at all teach anybody anything. So just remember, anybody calling themselves an economist and supporting Fed policy also has three playing cards to show you. They're located on a nice cardboard box. One of them's red, two of them are black. Are you getting my drift? That's all for, <laughs> yep. that's all for me this week, guys. Eddie, take them out of here. All right, guys. Uh, my pick of the week is a book I've actually recommended to a lot of you individually, uh, but I just haven't gotten around to doing a full review for the site. The book is The Zeros, My Misadventures in the Decade Wall Street Went Insane, and it's written by Randall Lane. Um, those of us who've been around a while will recognize Randall as the editor-in-chief of Trader Monthly Magazine, and that's what the book is all about. It's not another post-mortem on the crisis. Uh, it's just a fun book to read about the excesses of Wall Street in a crazy decade. If you younger guys want to know what models and bottles were all about, read this book. Uh, also, he doesn't pull any punches with Wall Street wannabes like Tim Sykes and Lenny Dykstra. <laughs> in fact, I think Nails actually sued him after this book came out. Uh, Nails, it's definitely a, it is definitely a fun read and definitely worthwhile, so check it out. Uh, that's all I've got this week. We're into the home stretch on 2010 already. And it's been an interesting year. If you like the new format of uh, NSFW, let us know in the comments and tell a friend about it. If you don't, get bent. Take care, monkeys, and we'll see you on WallStreetOasis.com.